take you to our bagpipers. That is John Lacoino and Christopher Rodriguez. He did a wonderful job bringing us in. Thank you. Welcome to this celebration of all of your accomplishments and your families, because they've also accomplished a lot by getting you through and not killing you in the process. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'm uh, Dr. Joyce Griffin Sobel. I'm the president of this glorious College of Nursing. Uh, we're going to have to be a little flexible with the program um, because we are having some special guests um, who will be joining us at various times uh, during the day. But I want to say on behalf of the faculty and staff that I offer congratulations to all of our graduates and their families. We have two groups of students who are graduating today. We have our generic baccalaureate students and our associate, uh, associate students in nursing. Um, and so that is uh, a great thing. Unfortunately, one of our fine students was uh, accidentally left out of the program. Uh, Teresa Elliott Holman, is that correct? Did I get your name right? And so we will have the program reprinted for her and her family so she has a memento of this wonderful day. And we're sorry for that. Unfortunately, sometimes it happens like this. Each of you has been transformed by this college. And uh, some of you may say uh, it was torture. <laughs> but, uh, and nursing school always is a little bit of torture because look at what we do for the rest of our lives for our career. We take care of the most critically ill people at the worst time in their lives. And they need us so much uh, to make them feel better, to administer their treatments, um, and to care for them. There's a wonderful book that just came out. It's called Taking Care. Um, and the author's last name is uh, D. Gregorio. You can get it on Amazon. It just came out this week. Uh, and it talks about the impact of nursing in a way that I haven't read in a long time. Um, she was on uh, the author CBS Sunday Morning. She's not a nurse. CBS Sunday Morning this uh, uh, last Sunday. And you can see the whole interview on YouTube. And it's really well worth uh, seeing. Um, and uh, I think lay people oftentimes really don't understand the impact that nursing has on their health care, on their outcomes, um, and their outcomes on society. And so I think it is a great book for everyone uh, to read, so I recommend it. But first, your families have been through it with you, haven't they? So I would like you all to stand, graduates, turn around and applaud your families. Wonderful, thank you. And your faculty, none of you would be here at all unless it was for your faculty. So let me introduce them. They're all sitting over here. We have Dr. Michelle Flinch, who's tucked over here in this corner. And over in this corner, we have Dr. Akia Blandin. Dr. Blanco. Dr. Moore. Dr. Ballaram. Professor Lysias. Dr. Ali. Dr. Lovano. Dr. Morozova? I can't see who's in the corner. Um, uh, Dr. Baidu? Dr. Hernandez? <laughs> Professor Rice? 
uh, Dr. Mich uh, Professor Michelle. Dr. Granner. And Renee Lopez. And then on the stage, I'm going to pass out from the heat in one more second. Um, on the stage, we have Dr. Carollo, our provost. Dr. Takati. Dr. Tark. And Dr. Giabo Amponsa. So that's good. That's a good thing to applaud those poor faculty, because they, they'll tell you they're poorly played, at paid, and overworked. <laughs> so I'm going to stop here and introduce one of our special guests. We are joined by our Deputy Mayor for Health and Human Services. How appropriate for our graduation. Her name is Ann Williams Isom. And she began her job in January of 22. She is an educator and has been an executive, a government agency leader, and an attorney. She held a, a chair at Fordham uh, in child welfare studies and was the CEO of the Harlem Children's Zone. Her specialty is children. So I welcome you, Deputy Mayor. Hello, hello, how's everybody doing? Good. You guys are beautiful. Oh my God, such inspiration. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Dr. Griffin Sobel, for inviting me here today. I am so glad to be here, and I'm close to home. I um, live in Harlem. I grew up in Queens. Anybody from Queens or Harlem? All right. And so I feel like this is my neighborhood. So first of all, congratulations on behalf of Mayor Adams and myself to all the graduates today. Can we give them another round of applause? This is a special milestone for each of you and it comes after so much hard work, dedication and commitment to your chosen field. We all know how important nurses are. The president was just talking about it. We see the stories in the news about the national shortage of nurses, how integral you play in the well-being and care of every person you serve, whether you choose to work in a hospital environment or a home care setting or any other setting. And I get it from a personal level for, from all of the families too because my 92-year-old mother and who lives with my husband and my children and I, was a nurse and a midwife for 60 years, you guys. So loving nurses is in my DNA. I saw up close the care that she had for her patients, the ethics of compassion and the advocacy she brought to work, always fighting for the best for the people that she worked for. And I know that that is what each of you who are graduating today will do also. Because I know that for so many of you in healthcare, it's not just a job, it's a calling. You are graduating on the heels of a once in a hundred year pandemic amidst an opioid crisis with New Yorkers, so many struggling with all kinds of chronic diseases from heart disease to type two diabetes. And amidst all of that, for some of you because of that, you have chosen to become nurses. You chose a field where you are oftentimes the person that's going to interact with patients the most, the one that engages with them the most at the most vulnerable times in their lives. For each person you serve, you know could be your mom, your dad, your sister, your friend. And that's why I am so filled with hope today. And frankly, all New Yorkers are filled with hope in a time where you guys, we really do need some hope in this city. Each of you reflect the beauty and the diversity seen in a home community here in our five boroughs and beyond. So thank you for making this choice, for committing to a profession that is so critical to our society, and for committing to serve your fellow New Yorkers. And before I close, I couldn't help but say, I would love for you, some of you, to come work for an H&H &H hospital, the city safety net systems, and one of the 11 hospitals. We would love to have you be a part of that team, so just let me know. But regardless of where you choose to work, thank you 
Thank you for the gift of your service, for those and all that you're sharing, and for the work that you're doing here. Today is yours. Enjoy it. Enjoy the journey that awaits you and the next steps of your life. Thank you and God bless you all. Thank you so much. Your remarks were very much appreciated. So our two groups of students, let me explain for those who don't know a lot about nursing uh, yet. Our AAS students are terrific. They will get their registered nurse degree, registered nurse license uh, after they pass a certain exam. And then I certainly hope that they will come back to our school, particularly, to get their baccalaureate degree. The other group of students are our baccalaureate students. And we have an accelerated baccalaureate program. We zip them through. Uh, in a little over two years, and uh, we are very proud. I think you're the fourth, is it third or fourth? Third, third graduating class, that's right, yes. Wonderful. Uh, we know that a baccalaureate degree makes a difference in how patients turn out. The outcomes for patients who are cared for by baccalaureate prepared nurses are better than other patients who are not. And so we want all of our students, all of our graduates, to get their baccalaureate degree. It's very important. And then, of course, there's your master's and your PhD or your DNP. Lifelong learning is, a, is a part of the bloodline of every uh, registered nurse because our field changes so often, so much. Uh, and it's, uh, unless you're constantly in school, it's very hard to keep up with the kind of care needs that your patients will have. They are sicker and sicker and sicker. Um, and so I am very glad that you have uh, gotten through this program. I know it has been very tough uh, for uh, all of you, really. And uh, for every uh, nursing student, it is a tough, tough road. But isn't it worth it? Isn't it worth it? You will never again be poor. Isn't that a nice feeling? <laughs> now, that doesn't mean you should run out to Tiffany's and buy a Rolex, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Aurelio. <laughs> um, but uh, you certainly will um, have a wonderful life. You'll be able to provide for yourself and your families and be comfortable while also doing the most amazing work that's always changing. Always change. There's so many different ways you can work as a registered nurse. So when you get sick of one thing, you can switch to something else. So, and I hope you'll take advantage of the diversity within the nursing profession, um, because it really is very rewarding. I certainly have done all kinds of things over my years um, and enjoyed almost all of it. Some, not so much, but you know, all, almost all of it. So here is how we're gonna do things. Um, we're going to call the students to the stage, and, uh, and I may need to stop this at one point because we are expecting um, Congressman Espela um, at, at some point. So when you are called, you're going to come out this aisle. Okay, the ushers will help you. Where are our ushers? Do you want to be in the aisle? Um, the, okay, there you are. Uh, the ushers will help, and you're going to come up row by row. Uh, up these stairs, watch these stairs. Okay, they're, they're, they're not fun, they're not fun. <laughs> so just be careful. We will have uh, people standing beside each stairwell to make sure you don't kill yourself. Okay, we don't want any broken ankles uh, in, as a result of this graduation. So you're gonna come up the stairs, you're going to take your card with your name on it and hand it to the reader, the faculty reader who will be standing here then you're gonna walk over here, and the faculty will be standing here to pin you. So you pick, the, the, the pins for GBS are lavender, pins for AAS are on a white ribbon. You'll walk up to whoever, whatever faculty you would like to pin you, and we do have a, an alum who is gonna pin her uh, 
fr is it a fr cousin? cousin? Cousin, okay. And I wrote your name down here, and of course I am, here it is, no, that's the wrong name. Um, Angela Moore is the graduate, yes, where are you? And your cousin is Danielle Thompson, an alum, and we're very proud. So she can pin uh, Angela. So when you see um, Angela proceed to the stairs, then Danielle, you can come on up and join the crowd up on stage. All right? So, so then you're going to get pinned, and then you're going to keep walking over here. I'll be over here. I will hand you your diploma. Okay, cover. It's, you already have your diploma. This is the cover for it. And then you're going to walk over and you're going to shake Dr. Fronthal's hand. Um, and then you're going to leave the stage and go back to your seat. Okay, everybody got that? And I just realized when I turned around, I forgot to introduce Dr. Fronthal. <laughs> I'm off my game today with, all, with guests. So Dr. Uh, James Fronthal is the chair of our Board of Trustees. He's been affiliated with this wonderful college for uh, many, 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 many years. So Dr. Fronthal, please come to the podium. Thanks very much. I'm delighted to welcome you here on behalf of the Board of Trustees of the Helene Fold College of Nursing. As our students have seen during their time at the college, it's been growing and changing. There's new faculty, new facilities, and new programs. Earning a degree from the Helene Fold College of Nursing is truly a great accomplishment. You should go forth with the self-confidence that you've mastered a comprehensive program that'll prepare you well for the future. I've been involved with the Helene Fold College for nearly 40 years, and I've been working longer than that. In the process, I've learned a few things that I'd like to share. You'll need to pass the NCLEX exam to be certified as a registered nurse. Graduates who take the NCLEX exam as soon as they can do the best. Register, study, don't forget to study, and then take the exam so that the material that you've just learned is still fresh in your mind. You're new to being a registered nurse where you will be treated as a professional. It's essential that you act like one. Don't be surprised when you get abuse from doctors, administrators, patients, patients' family, and maybe even other nurses. Learn to listen and be receptive to criticism. It's fine to assert your opinions if you disagree, but venting your anger, even anonymously, is a very bad idea. It sets you up for failure. Don't ever do it. If you're earning an associate degree today, as Dr. Griffin Sobel said, we would be delighted to have you return to the college to get a bachelor's degree. In addition, uh, I recommend that you join the Alumni Association. It's good for the college, which is in turn good for you. So once again, congratulations, and uh, it's, I'm glad to have you here. All right, can I have the faculty who will be pinning come to the stage? And the person that has the ribbons, where are you? Okay, there you are, all right. All right. And while they're coming up on stage, I'm gonna be introduce Dr. Michelle Flinch, who will talk a little bit about a pinning ceremony. Greetings, nursing graduates, family and friends. It is my honor to welcome you all to this special nursing pinning ceremony. The nursing pin has a rich history dating back to the Maltese Cross. The tradition started at the Nightingale School of Nursing in London. 
where a pen was designed as a badge with the Maltese cross for nurses as they completed their program. The first pen in the United States was presented to graduates at the Bellevue Hospital School of Nursing in New York City in 1880. The pin is a symbolic welcome into the profession and is given by a nurse. Alrighty, here we go. Let me have the first row of GBS students and the reader to come to the podium. Gilbert Ararian. <laughs> Tiara Felix. <laughs> Angela Moore. <laughs> Zakira. Sweetie Balagan. <laughs> Osa Uwemen Ogbeta. Mamiya Hagen. Namina Avdu. <laughs> Daisy Obata. <laughs> Ralph Jean Louise. Matthew Gentles. Adrian Sandy. Ovon Dixon. Suri Davis. <laughs> Gisela Mendez Herrera. Daniel Vudovichenko. Shade Lyons. Giovanni Constanza. Humo Medis. Debbie Roger. Amanda Platinia. Catherine Rodriguez.
Lovelia Colon. Ashley Owens. Jillian Blair. Tawana Lassen. Daisy Fentes. Carolyn Bramherrick. <laughs> Teresa Elliot Holman. <laughs> Stephanie Julie Core. Angelica Eileen. Josephine Okansi. Candice Cesario. Samaya Green. <laughs> Raul Holder. <laughs> Vasti Hill. Sanovia Roberts <laughs> Terry Ann Lisa Smith <laughs> Michelle Byfield Kamisha Hamilton. <laughs> Josephine Bobby. <laughs> Crystal Hun. Dashana Bennett. <laughs> Nicolette Donelson. <laughs> Monique Evering. Michelle Sampson.
Cassandra Grant. <laughs> Lizette Canales Leno. Leno. OCL Pereira. Jamie Pereira. Nolitanda Luana. Patrine Pinak. Megan Peterson. Maria Moraitis. Milena Guerrero. Ashley Gonzalez Colon. We're going to take a bit of a break in the proceedings because Congressman Espelot has joined us. <laughs> Congressman Espelot is the first Dominican American to serve in the U.S. House of Representatives. And his congressional district includes our school, Harlem. East Harlem, West Harlem, that's all Harlem, I think, Hamilton Heights and Washington Heights and Inwood, Marble Hill and the Northwest Bronx. He was first elected to Congress in 2016 and he was sworn into office in 2017. He serves as a member of the influential U.S. House Committee on Appropriations responsible for funding the federal government's vital activities and as a ranking member of the Legislative Branch Subcommittee. He also serves on the House Budget Committee. So, Congressman Espelot, the school needs money. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you so much. You're very well. Thank you. I'll be quick. I know that there's nothing more exciting than a graduation, right? And uh, I want to congratulate all of you and your professors as well for the great work that they did to bring you here, right? at a critical time in history where healthcare is at a crossroad. Right? And after the pandemic, uh, what we saw was what we already knew, that these health disparities uh, across communities like this one were overwhelming. And nobody was more in front and in, in the trenches than nurses. They were there for us when we needed them. And you know, folks, uh, you know, telehealth played a role in during the pandemic, but that's distant, right? But the nurses are, are right there by your bedside. And when the family members couldn't be there because of COVID, and they were on Facebook saying goodbye to their loved ones, you were there. And so that's so important to me and to everybody that I represent. And uh, you all don't see it, but I do, you have halos, you are all angels. And, and I wish you all the very best. I know that uh, it is a very challenge. Yesterday I had a meeting with the nurses union, right? And I'm very supportive of the nurses union. I think they should lower the ratio between nurses and patients, right? 
you, you want to take care of the patients and you want to offer them the right care, right? The quality care that they deserve. And if the ratio is too high, you won't be able to do that. You need to get compensated right for the work that you do. And so, you know, I have high, re high respect for doctors and physicians, but you know, they come in and out of that emergency room. They come in and out of that room where the patient is at. You know, whenever something goes wrong, they jump in. But you're there all the time. So, so you need to be compensated for that. And, and our communities uh, deserve to have you, but we need to give back to you. And so the healthcare industry must be centered around people like you, nurses. It must be centered around people that provide all the ancillary uh, assistance that the physicians uh, give. It must be centered around primary care too and physicians and less on mega money, right, and pharmaceuticals that are gobbling up the profits and often leave people like you behind. So I'll continue, I'll continue the fight with the nurses union to make sure that you have better conditions, but we feel very proud of you and we're very glad that you chose this profession. So God bless you and always keep the faith. Thank you. I know the congressman is going to get us a windfall from Congress. <laughs> we need it. All right, so we will now start again with where we left off, with um, the pinning and the uh, reading of names. So everybody that was up here before, come on back. Sakia Simon. Giles. Bryce Giles Jr. Titian Harris. Titian Harris. Tashika Campbell. <laughs> Tiffany Thomas. Pilar Miller. Pilar Miller. <laughs> Erok Tido. Santiago. Stanley Vadu. Stephanie Verdue. <laughs> Debrie Johnson. Kadia Adams Small. Lillian Alcima. Shannon. 
Shahida Miles. Jamila Miles. Liliana Michaka. <laughs> Symphony Roach. Kishan Davis. Steven Rivera. <laughs> Natalia Phillip. <laughs> Stanley Ngoka. Taryn, Taryn Norman. Larendra Ramdas. Francesca Cuevas. Rick Lissandra. <laughs> Farima Kohn. Congratulations, everyone. I love watching you making out with the faculty as you come across. <laughs> it's, uh, it's so uh, gratifying to see the relationships that you've built with our faculty. And I hope, what was that? Uh, something blue. Um, and I hope that you'll stay in touch with all of us as you move through your career. You know, we can still offer you advice once you're working. Uh, most of us have been around the block once or twice, and so we can uh, help you. So now we're going to uh, do some awards. We love awards. But the first thing we're going to do is introduce our valedictorian for the GBS program. Mr. Let me let me okay. Let me tell you his name, uh, Mr. Gilbert Aurelian. Y'all making me nervous. Um, good morning, President Sobel, um, faculty, guests, and most of all, graduates. Before I start, I want to thank the faculty at Helene Ford for being so dedicated to providing us with the tools we needed to be great nurses. I told myself that if I got on the stage, I would spend the time talking to my classmates, but give me a couple seconds to say I'm here 
elevated, graduated on the stage because I stood on the backs of strong women my whole life. My mom, my rock, my foundation when I was born, I was the first born. She sacrificed her dreams and dedicated her life to raising her children. I love you and I thank you for that, mommy. Um, um, my auntie, Tati Evelyn, my mom was raising a man. My dad wasn't always around, so she didn't have the time to teach me how to be a man and be soft with me. When I needed something soft, uh, my aunt was my soft spot. Um, now, I saw this post on Instagram. Um, it said, some of y'all only look like great dads because your baby mothers were exceptional. That's me. <laughs> Ashley, thank you for being what I needed you to be at the exact moment I needed you to be it. I can't be here without you. Um, Riley, my baby, you are my light. I am a better everything because I am your dad. I love you. I work this hard to show you that you can and you will be anything you want to be. You can climb any heights. You are all powerful and you are good. And I am your biggest cheerleader and supporter. My brother Gandhi now, um, Helene Ford alum, you have been lighting the path for me since high school. You went first and I followed your steps. I love you, man. Um, uh, now, now, now to my classmates, I'm not the smartest person in the room by far. I'm not here because I have some incredible intellectual skill. I'm here because I never had to look far to find heroes. My superpower is that I notice the exceptional things about people and I try to apply those things to my life. So I want to talk about the exceptional things I picked up watching my classmates. I'm going to start with Mia. Mia, you showed perseverance, Mamiya, for her family. Uh, <laughs> um, she had a kid during this program. I think she missed like a couple weeks of class and she was right back to it. That's amazing, you did that. Um, Angela, the first thing you showed me was faith. Angela Moore, she wanted me to say her last name. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> uh, the first thing you showed me was faith and ultimate belief in yourself. We had just had the worst semester and collectively our confidence was at the lowest it could have been. Angela decided that at that moment she was gonna quit her career, right? She bet on herself and she won that bet. The second thing she told me was discipline. One thing about me is I'm gonna start the semester super motivated and then right after midterms, if I did well, it was gonna be a drop off on motivation. What I learned is that when you wake up and there's no motivation to do anything, what gets you through is discipline. Angela was disciplined when I didn't have motivation. And I don't make it on the stage without you and without that. Um, okay, Ozzy, I seen him have a bad semester. He made it, it, it was close for him. But I watched him rearrange his, over on this team, I watched him rearrange his whole life around this program and come back better, more focused, and serious about success, about being successful. Um, okay. um, May, the other president, she, she showed me how it looks to be truly selfless. I watched her life fall apart every semester. Every single semester her life was falling apart. Uh, she always found a way to get through it <laughs> while also having the capacity and fight to advocate for anyone who needed it. Fiona is not only hardworking, she had a level of grit and toughness that was amazing to me. Mm. Now, Tiwa, Modern Cliff, <laughs> Tiara, Tiara Felix. Um, where am I? Wait, wait. Um, she was everything during this program. She planned the wedding, she works two jobs, she's a mother, a homemaker, and I hold her personally responsible for making sure I had my stuff together. <laughs> Furthermore, when I was falling apart, she was the person I felt I dropped my problems off at. But Tiwa taught me to bounce back. If she got a bad test grade, she didn't like, she was gonna cry for the night and then she was right back to work. And when she cried, she was unstoppable, get out the way. That fight, that toughness, that drive, you can do whatever you want. You are your mother's dream and I know she's proud of you. Before I say this, I was, I was in the Navy on a submarine for three and a half years. And after a deployment without seeing or speaking to your family and going days or weeks without seeing the sun, the boat becomes all encompassing. For you to adjust to that, you kind of have to let go home a little bit to find happiness in like the space you're in. Um, 
when I used to come back home, I used to stop and just sit in the car for a couple hours. And in that time, I was trying to turn back into the version of myself my family was used to seeing. When this program started feeling like the boat, the little lady in the Martian, AKA <laughs> Zakira and Ariana, you were my two hours in the car. Y'all helped me not think about school. We rarely ever spoke about class or grades or anything. You guys were what I needed, and I love y'all for that. Siri was there too, by the way. I didn't forget you. Um, now, junkies, from the beginning, we had us. Every one of us had a moment where we were carrying the whole group. The junkies was a study group, but clearly it changed. <laughs> um, um, and it was never about a do this for me and I'll do this for you. It was always about we're going to do whatever it takes to make sure we all walk across the stage. We got us, and we did it. I didn't say everyone's name, but just about everyone here taught me something. Sade with her fire and passion about everything. Um, Daisy with her positivity in the study guides. Ua, he started this program and he was 19 years old and was disciplined and focused, hardworking, smart and charismatic. Shout out to their parents, wherever they are. Um, you, got, you, guys, you guys did a great job. So I said all that to say this. We are about to do something special, new, and big. It makes sense for us to be nervous about that, but I want you to, I want to say that today. Not in the future, today. You're all exceptional. This program was hard and we did that. That was exceptional. We have the tools we need to be great. Thank you for being my heroes. Wonderful. Now we have another valedictorian, our AAS program valedictorian, Tawana Lawson. cry. I loved your speech. And I'm sorry, guys, I don't have any sentimental me memories about us. <laughs> we only had a year and a half together, so it was, it was tough. But esteemed faculty members, honored guests, family, friends, and of course, fellow graduates, good afternoon to you and welcome. It is truly an honor to stand before you today as valedictorian of this wonderful graduating class. Firstly, I want to begin by congratulating each and every one of my fellow graduates on this incredible achievement. We did it, guys. We worked hard, we persevered through so many challenges. The long clinical hours, back-to-back -back exam failures, but my personal favorite of them all, ATIs. <laughs> And for many of us, we face these challenges while juggling the conflicts of our personal lives. I know I'm a mom, many of us are parents, we've worked, and we still persevered. Graduates, I think you'll agree with me when I say that today is truly a day to celebrate. <laughs> Moving forward, I just wanted to take a moment to reflect on the vision statement of our beloved institution. Our vision statement states that the Helene Falls College of Nursing will be nationally recognized for excellence in nursing education and noted for its comprehensive, innovative academic programs that are responsive to the healthcare challenges of the future. As nursing professionals, we are called to be leaders in healthcare, and I believe, I think we all know, that our institution prepared us very well for this role. Our education has been nothing short of excellent, giving us the knowledge and skills necessary to be well-rounded nurses. We have been taught to be innovative and think critically, sorry, to address the challenges that may arise throughout our nursing careers. 
And in this moment, I would like to say thank you to our exceptional administration, our professors, who worked tirelessly to equip us with these tools for success. I would also like to extend a special thanks to our families, our friends, and anyone who supported our graduates, making today possible for us. And although our journeys may have been different, each of us had different paths, different struggles. We were able to complete our education, as well as make lifelong memories, and maybe some friends. <laughs> But as we move forward, I urge each and every one of you to continue to embody the values and the principles of our institution. I want us to always and to continue striving for excellence throughout our careers. Let's make Helen Folds Nur College of Nursing proud. Congratulations once again, class of 2023. Just before I go, I want to leave you with some words by Confucius. Our greatest glory is never in failing is never, is in not, sorry. Our greatest glory is not in never failing, but in rising every time we fall. Thank you. have two finer valedictorians, could we? Just wonderful. Dr. Sandy Carollo, our provost, is now going to present the awards. Okay. Okay. Okay, now for the good stuff. So the first award for academic excellence, this is the highest academic average, goes to Tawana Lawson. This is for the AAS program. And for the GBS program, academic excellence, to Gilbert Arielan. <laughs> Academic honors for the uh, AAS program, uh, Maria Mariaitis. GBS program, Dan Lil Davidicek. Okay. For the AAS program, uh, the third highest academic honors will go to Carolyn Ramarack. Okay, and for the GBS program, Tiara Felix. Okay. 
Now, for clinical excellence, this is for the AAS program, and this is presented to a student who achieves clinical recognition in each of the four clinical nursing courses. Michelle Byfield. For the GBS program, a say woman, Ogbeta. <laughs> okay, for clinical honors, uh, this is. Um, Presented to a student who achieves clinical recognition in three of the four clinical nursing um, courses. For the AAS, Carolyn Ramarack. Okay, and clinical honors for the GBS program, Nermina Avdu. For the Marguerite Haggerty Memorial Award, this is an award presented in recognition of a student who has demonstrated excellence in medical surgical nursing. For the AAS program, this is Jia Zeng. the GBS program, Amanda Plantia. For the Carol A. Thompson Memorial Award given to a graduating student in the AAS program uh, in recognition of demonstrated perseverance in pursuing a nursing career. Sakaya Simon. And for the GBS program, Sade Lyons. And the final award today is a provost award. This is um, uh, presented to a faculty member who has demonstrated outstanding support for the college mission, vision, and values. And this goes to Dr. Afina Ali.
Yeah. Okay, we're at that point. Uh, President Griffin Sobel, honored guests. As provost, I have the honor to present to you the candidates for graduation, May 5th, 2023. Each has completed the requirements for graduation and for the Associate of Applied for the Associate of Applied Science degree or Bachelor of Science degree. Thank you. Thank you. Graduates, please stand. <laughs> Having fulfilled all requirements, for the GBS, the baccalaureate degree in nursing. I hereby confer the, the graduate degree, the, the, the baccalaureate degree in nursing on each one of your grad, of each one of these graduates. You may turn your tassels to the left. Having fulfilled all requirements for an associate degree in nursing, I hereby confer the AAS degree on each of you. Tassel to the left. Congratulations, you're official. You may be seated. I hope you never forget this day. I hope you never do, um, because it is such a milestone in your life. And uh, it, you deserve all of the praise and recognition that you'll receive. I know you're going to pass your NCLEX on the first time. And until then, you do nothing but ATI. <laughs> study, 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 study. Families, do not let them do anything. They can party today, that's it. <laughs> then they go back and they study constantly until they pass that test. It is the key to your lifetime success. I hope you'll always remember the college. I hope you'll support us in the future. And I wish you all of the best. <laughs>